Right guys, how's it going? Um, I am packing for a canyoning expedition tomorrow. So I thought I'd just uh, make a small video clip and show you guys the kit that I'm taking down and give you a bit of an explanation of why I take what. So the first bit of kit and probably one of the most important pieces is this dry bag. Uh, this is a Sea to Summit dry bag that I got whilst we were doing the Stand Up for Rhinos project. Uh, it's pretty cool. This is a 65 litre I think, but it's a nice sturdy dry bag with the backpack built in that I can uh, put everything in and that will start for the basis of everything. Here we got some of the kits. I'm going to be using uh, these pretty like really um, <laughs> minimalist harnesses from Petzl um, because I don't want to use my, my nice climbing harnesses because we're going to be in a watery environment so yeah waistband, a couple of leg loops and you're done. No frills, no fuss, but that's that's a good bit of kit. The rope that I'm going to be using, I've got two two ropes. They're both the same, just two different lengths. I've got a 50 millimeter nine mil static. This is uh, actually specifically designed for caving, so it's a it's a nice wet environment rope. And because it's nine mil, it's a lot more compact than if you were using 10.5 or 11 mil rope. Good strength, no problem, but very nice and light to use in this environment. So I've got a 50 meter and I've got a, a 23 meter. The 23 meter I just have to use at one point on the, on the mission tomorrow because it's a little bit, um, just a little bit over 25. So if I want to do a double rope rappel, it doesn't, the 50 meter doesn't work quite, doesn't quite touch the bottom on a double rope. So I just extend it with this on one side and I come down after I send the other guys down. Um, I'm going to be relaying everybody on an ATC guide. I like the guide, it's just uh, nice to use. I'm taking along a normal tube style belay device as well, just in case. In case I drop one or, or, or let one swim in the drink. Um, so those are there. Um, I'm taking down a Gree Gree, just in case we have to do any sort of rescue stuff. Um, mostly just because I prefer this as a, as a nice auto blocking system, especially if I have to create a mechanical advantage system with some pulleys. Um, and then I'm taking this little ascender. I'm taking this one as opposed to this one, just because of the, the size difference and weight difference. I could take that, but it's not necessary. I'm just going to take the little ascender. The only thing I'm going to be using it for again is to set up some sort of mechanical advantage system if I have to hoist something or rescue someone or that sort of thing. So I don't need that. And then I'm taking one pulley for the same reason. It probably won't be utilized, but um, it'll be used only in the event of an emergency. I can show you there's the Gree Gree from Petzl. We've got the ATC guide, then the normal ATC, then we've got the little ascender from Petzl as well, and then the little pulley. I do have some extra gear in my um, in my PFD because my PFD is already set up for a pin kit. So I'll, have, I'll show you that in a second. It's nice to keep the rope dry for the first couple of drops before we have to um, carry around a wet rope because the weight increases quite significantly. The rope is wet. take along this little dry bag. I'm just going to clip it on the outside for now. This is going to be for the snacks and stuff that we pick up on the way so I'm not going to go into too much detail with that. Then the PFD, there is a slight danger of flash flood and there's also swimming through uh, pools, committed pools that you can't actually get around. So I like to always wear my PFD, it just makes swimming through the pools a lot more comfortable when I'm carrying ropes and stuff and allows me to not have to tread water and stuff if there's a, if there's a situation. Um, if I'm retrieving the rope from the bottom, I don't have to tread water and, and worry about weight and stuff. I just float there and pull the rope down. just makes my life a lot easier. Um, this is an Astral green jacket. And uh, this is my kayaking jacket, so I wear this a lot. Um, and because of that, inside my kayaking jacket, let's see if you can see, I've still got my pin kit that I use for kayaking. So I've got a river knife. Always important when you're working with ropes to have a knife that you can cut away with. Uh, got a sling and a carabiner. 
This is all part of the pin kit. I got a few Prusiks and another carabiner. So we're not going to be short of, uh, of gear. But I'm going to keep this all in my jacket just as I would normally when I'm kayaking anyway so that I can have it ready on me if I need it. Then in the back pockets as well I've got a, another, another pulley. Again, will only be used in the case of an emergency, but that's from my pin kit as well, so that can stay in there. On the other side again as well, there's another, another pulley there just in case. Of course, another important bit of kit is the brain bucket. Got to be wearing a brain bucket. This is mostly not so much for falling like a lot of people think, but this is for rock falls. In this environment that we're going into tomorrow, it's a really, really narrow canyon, and the basalt there with the rain that gets cold and heats up with the, the sun and the big chunks of rock fall off so always wear your brain bucket the next thing I want to look at is the safety gear so here with this red dry bag I've got a couple of things the first thing is a safety kit, a first aid kit this is quite a comprehensive first aid kit it's got pretty much anything you would think of that you need in a, in a first aid environment right down to artery clamps and everything so this is very 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 uh, comprehensive and this is the, the expedition first aid kit I always take wherever I go whether it's a kayaking expedition whether it's a canyoning one especially if it's a more than a if it's a multi-day or going into somewhere that's uh, remote and has very little access so that's the first aid kit and the first aid kit I always try to keep it in a red dry bag just so that everyone can identify quickly which is the, is the first aid kit and where the emergency supplies are. The next thing that I'm going to put in this red dry bag is two radios. This is just in case somebody has to go a little bit further on or a little bit away from the group. They can take a radio with them and we can have comms between us. If there's a situation, we'll know what's going on so we don't lose communications between two, two parts of the group if they, if they do separate. And then I've got my little survival kit. This is mostly fire stuff. There's a couple of things in here. There's uh, tampons, there's a lighter, there's a flint for striking, there's a little knife, just random stuff that would come in handy if we do have a situation where we have to overnight. In this particular canyon that we're going into, um, it is very committing and if somebody does have quite a bad situation halfway down it's very unlikely that we'll be able to get them out very quickly and even going to go and get help will be a long long process so it's nice to just be prepared for an unexpected overnight just in case then the next thing I want to add is my water source. Normally I'd have to carry a lot of water but thanks to the guys at Life Straw when they supported us for our Stand Up For Owners project we got given all these bottles which are pretty sick. Um, what it is is it's a Life Straw filter attached inside the bottle and that just goes in there like that and I can drink from any water source that I can find along the way. So in this case I'll be drinking directly from the from the river that's that runs down this little canyon that forms the waterfalls. So that's a good bit of kit that I'll just strap to the outside of my bag and have ready for me the whole time. And then the last thing is probably cameras and stuff. So I've got a, a Peli case and in the Peli case the camera fits in there nicely. You can see it's been cut specially. So my camera goes in there, spare GoPro battery and my phone fits right there. The only problem is this Peli case has had its handle broken. This happened uh, was rafting the other day. I was actually um, riverboarding when it happened, but I had attached my pedicase case by the handle with a carabiner to a, a cam strap on the raft. And uh, the raft went into the meat of 16B. Now that the water's high, there's a nice big wave on the on the right, and uh, the packs landed in the water. Everybody swam, and the violence of the wave just tore apart my my pedicase case handle. So I'm going to do another video. Um, which you can watch later where I'm going to actually take this handle and modify it and use some uh, 550 paracord to make a new handle which I think will be cool because it'll mean that I've always got paracord on me if I need it as well so 
it'll be a nice little modification to a standard Peli case that will then allow me to have an emergency backup of paracord if I need it. Hopefully everything goes well and we have some fun and uh, yeah we'll we'll let you know how it goes and of course uh, as always you'll see the video. Cheers guys.